So spin is one of those things that people ask me about all the time. In lessons, in the YouTube comments, it's one of those things that people really want to learn because they see higher level players using it and using it effectively. So it's a pretty appealing thing to try to learn, especially if you're newer to the game or still developing your skills. The problem is I see a lot of people going about it the wrong way. So today we're gonna to try to clear all that up. Okay, so let's start with topspin first. What does topspin actually do to the flight of the ball? Okay, so first of all, topspin would be when the ball is rolling forward. So it's rolling forward towards the court where you're hitting. Okay, so that's topspin. And basically what it's gonna do is a couple things. Generally, topspin is gonna start higher off your paddle. Second, it's gonna make the ball dip quicker. So once it gets over the net, the ball is gonna wanna dive into the court faster. And then it's also gonna wanna make the ball bounce a little bit higher once it bounces. Okay, so you can just kinda of see the, sh the shape of this shot when I hit. Up quickly, diving down, and then bouncing a little bit higher on the other side. So the second main type of spin that we're gonna use is called underspin, and it's just the opposite. So that ball is gonna be rolling backwards towards you after you hit it. Okay, so it's gonna be rolling this way, flying away. Okay, and pretty much it's gonna do, have all this, the opposite properties of ball flight. So the ball is gonna to want to stay a little bit lower initially. It's gonna to wanna to float more. And when it bounces, it's gonna skid and stay lower. So underspin will look like this. You can see it stays lower, it stays on a flatter plane longer. And then when it bounces, it's gonna bounce lower. So now that we know what the spin does to the ball, let's figure out how we're gonna do it. The most common mistake I see when people are trying to use spin is you can tell they're trying to put spin on the ball. So you see these swings that are really big, really choppy, and you can tell that their, their end goal is to impart a bunch of spin on the ball. We're gonna try to, try to take the approach that if you swing a certain way, spin is just a natural product of that swing. So spin is never your end goal. It's just a product of a certain type of swing and a certain type of face angle. So having said that, there's only two things that control spin. There's two things we're gonna focus on. There's two things we're gonna worry about. One is what we call face angle. So is your paddle open, closed, square? So this would be square, this would be open, this would be closed, okay? The second thing that we're gonna focus on is what we call swing path. So is the paddle swinging flat from low to high or from high to low, okay? So those two elements, face angle and swing path, in any combination are, you gonna, allow, are gonna allow you to do basically any type of spin you want. So let's talk top spin first. In general, top spin is gonna be a square face angle. So it's not open, not closed, but it's straight up and down. And it's gonna be a low to high swing path. So if I've got this square and this is going low to high, it's gonna brush on the ball like that, okay? Again, the opposite would be underspin. With underspin, in general, I want you to have an open face angle and we're gonna have a fairly flat swing path, okay? One of the big mistakes I see people uh, make with the underspin is we're chopping down too much. You do not need to come down on the ball to create underspin. A fairly flat swing and an open face angle is gonna apply underspin to the ball. Okay, so here's how we're gonna start to feel this for ourselves. We're gonna do this in dinking first because it's the easiest way to kind of feel the nuance of this. Also, when you start feeling spin, we're just looking for little amounts, okay? You wanna feel what little adjustments are gonna make, okay? So I'm gonna start with, with some dinking, 
And my focus at first is gonna to be to impart no spin on the ball. So if I'm hitting and my paddle goes right through the center of the ball, that's gonna put, it's, it's pretty much gonna be flat. There's not gonna be any spin on it, okay? So I'm gonna start dinking. And I'm just gonna to try to get the paddle hitting the back of the ball flat. Now, the slight nuance we're gonna make, we're gonna to start to add just a touch of topspin. So like we talked about before, if I close the face slightly and steepen the swing slightly, and this can be with the arm, it could be using your wrist a little bit, but basically we need the paddle to be going steeper through the ball. Now you're gonna be imparting just a touch of topspin on those, okay? So it would look something like this. Here's the flat, close the face, Steep in the swing. Next, we're going to go the opposite way. So, we're going to start to feel a little bit of underspin. And again, just Small adjustments here, okay? So now we open the paddle face, and rather than going this way through, lifting through, we're gonna flatten out the swing. Now the paddle face is creating the lift, and we're coming under the ball, and letting the paddle do all the work, okay? So that would look like this, here's the flat. Now we're gonna go here. Open paddle level swing. Back to the flat. And a bit of top spin. Under. Flat. Okay, so you can see these are pretty small nuances in the swing that I'm making. The, the biggest mistake I see people make with this is we're making really drastic, you know, so we're hitting underspin and we're making these big choppy motions or really big low to high motions to try to get top spin. The goal to, to, to feel is less is more here. Little adjustments are gonna make big differences. So the last thing I wanna do here is give you some specific use cases of when you would use each types of these spins. So looking at top spin first, you're gonna see it commonly used for serves, third shot drives, roll volleys, aggressive dinks, especially on the forehand side. Really what top spin enables us to do is either hit the ball harder or get the ball to dip below net level quicker. Now I'm quite sure some of you are gonna be jumping in the comments telling me how amazing your backhand slice serve is and you ace people 10 times a day with it. I get it, everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses, personal preferences. I'm just trying to give some basic guidelines here. Now let's check out the common times you're gonna see underspin used out on the court. There's a couple of them, uh, return a serve is one, third shot drop, backhand dinks, resets, in general, underspin is going to allow us to soften shots, take pace off the ball, get the ball to maybe float a little bit deeper, like on a return of serve. That's all I got for today. Now it's your turn to get out there and start spinning that ball. But remember, not overdoing it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see everyone next time. Thanks.